example, explosive new video in the still unsolved death of Baltimore homicide detective Sean Souter. WMAR 2 News obtained video of a forensic interview where a man says Souter was murdered in that alley off of Bennett Place last November. Souter's death was originally ruled a homicide, but a report by an independent review board this summer unanimously concluded it was suicide. Now the medic medical examiner says the manner of death is under review. Well, WMAR 2 News has dug up documents in the past that challenge that theory, and now this video further questions the board's conclusion. WMAR 2 News investigative reporter Brian Kubler has been working this story all year, and he's here tonight with this exclusive story. It remains one of the biggest open wounds from last year's record-setting violent crime rate. The death of homicide detective Sean Souter, shrouded in mystery, a litany of unanswered questions. Tonight, this is at least one of the leads police gathered in the weeks after his shooting. This is an interview inside the Baltimore Police Department's homicide section on December 8, 2017. The man being interviewed is Dante Pauling, picked up on a gun possession charge three weeks after the death of homicide detective Sean Souter. You familiar with Cal on Emotion? Pauling tells these officers he heard what happened to Sean Souter and began detailing how he knew the guy who knew how it happened. He describes how he was at the bar that night on Mosier when the man came down the street obviously upset over what just happened. The man explained how his friend just killed someone. This before we even know that there was a police no English to the news or whatever. He's like, man, he was in his stash and basically said that the kid was in his stash and the detective dude started to walk over, to walk over top of him. Basically, when he looked up, he just seen a, a, a nigga with a gun or whatever. So, like, he... Now this is the video released by the Independent Review Board this summer. It's private surveillance from a resident halfway down the block of Bennett Place. That is Souter behind the van. The IRB, which unanimously concluded the homicide detective committed suicide, used this video as evidence to say he was pacing, working up the courage to jump into the alley and shoot himself. But Pauling is now telling detectives this is when Souter decided to run into the alley to confront a suspect leaning over his drug stash. Gun drawn in plain clothes. Pauling never did get the man's name who allegedly overpowered Souter and killed him with his own service weapon. In fact, Pauling says none of them even knew Souter was a cop until they saw the news later that night. He ain't never say no names. He ain't never say no name. And, and when he told the story about having the mic, we still even know it was an officer yet. And she hit the news and they don't, but I ain't. What is unclear is whatever came of this tip, but statements made during this interview eventually became part of a federal case of a different target. Federal prosecutors and a jury found Paul incredible enough to help convict one of the most prolific killers in recent Baltimore history. Montana Baronet and his trained to go gang stood trial in October. Former City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis called Baronet evil, the city's number one trigger puller upon his arrest in 2016. The feds ended up pinning eight murders on him, nearly a dozen on his crew. All of it laid out in this 24 page verdict sheet, signed, sealed, and convicted on Halloween. The jury believed the government's case made in part with two days of public testimony from Pauling. This piece of information, this interview, further invalidates the conclusion in the IRB report. That Jeremy Eldridge is Sean Suda's attorney. He's seen this video and while he doesn't know how much of it was vetted, it continues to fuel even more questions about the board's conclusion of suicide. This is yet again the icing on the cake, so to speak, that the IRB report should not be utilized by the Office of the Medical Examiner to reach any conclusion because it simply is not a fair portrayal of the evidence that has been compiled in this case. It is important to note the IRB report says police ran down 54 tips and that, quote, all leads were exhausted, but the report does not mention this lead specifically. Now, we reached out to the Baltimore Police Department, which said it cannot comment on an open investigation. But the Baltimore State's Attorney's Office did tell us the matter of this interview is part of an open case and is a pending matter. 
Meanwhile, the office of the chief medical examiner said today there has been no update in the Souter case.